is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Fox. The Rays and Indians 2014 campaigns did not go according to plan. Each club failing to reach the postseason after squaring off in the AL wildcard game a year ago. And so, it's time to look toward the future. And tonight, Alex Colome takes the hill with an eye toward joining the Rays rotation in 2015. Tonight, we greet you from the north coast of Lake Erie, Cleveland, Ohio, for game two of this season ending series between the Rays and the Cleveland Indians. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to an evening of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats. So good to have you with us. Well, last night, a great pitcher's duel won by the Cleveland Indians, one to nothing in B.A. tonight. The Rays will have a strong right arm on the hill, and Alex Colome, who's hoping come next spring to compete for a spot, maybe the fifth spot in the Rays rotation. This is when you start looking towards 2015. Who's going to be in that Rays starting rotation? Alex Colome is going to get the opportunity to present his case tonight. This is what it looks like. In the rotation, you know it. Cobb, Archer, Smiley, Jake Odorizzi. For the fifth spot right now, because remember, Matt Moore is still coming back from injury, maybe late May, early June. Someone's going to have to be in there. We've seen Nathan Carnes, what he's capable of. Alex Colome, a tremendous arm. Is he going to be consistent enough? Jeremy Hellickson, the same thing. It's going to be a guy that you feel is going to fight for this spot. But you want to make a lasting impression. And this is going to be Alex Colome's last start of the season here for the Rays. You see what he's done in his first two right there. 12 and a third innings, just one earned run. So looking to close out strong and get a boost towards next season. The caveat to all of that, he will be out of options. So if he doesn't make a spot in the rotation, there's a chance he could wind up in the bullpen. He spent most of his career in the minor leagues as a starting pitcher. Rays and the Indians just around the corner back after this.
Alex Colome to the hill tonight for the Rays on a beautiful evening in Cleveland. Temperature 70 degrees. Drop into the low to mid 60s before this game is complete. Tonight's lineup presented by your Southern Four Dealers for the Rays. Ben Zobras leads off, followed by David DeJesus and Evan Longoria. Loney Myers and Franklin down the middle with Matt Joyce, Ryan Hannigan, and Logan Forsythe completing Joe Madden's lineup. Carlos Carrasco on the hill. And the first pitch of this game presented by Pinchapenny, and it's too high to Ben Zobris. So we are underway tonight in the second game of this three game series. That's a strike, it's one and one. Well, it's been an interesting year here for Carlos Carrasco as you see the numbers. 40th appearance, 14th start. You know, he started in the Indians rotation. First four starts, he was 0-3 with an ERA approaching 7. Put into the bullpen. Did a pretty nice job out of the bullpen. And then Terry Francona brings him back in for a spot start on August the 10th. And he has not given up that spot since then. Nine starts since August the 10th. He's given up one or zero earned runs in seven of them. And it's 5-2 and two with a 1.32 in that span. 27 years old, and he is showing that perhaps his time has come as a starting pitcher because they just can't get him out of the rotation. He's pitching that well. I said that when he went to the bullpen, he really learned some things. They sharpened up his delivery a little bit, had him come out of the stretch, which is why this is how you see him right here, even as a starter now, 10th start since that August the 10th, going right out of the stretch, modified delivery. Well, it uh, certainly simplifies things yeah. a lot. He's got a great arm. You know, you're going to see that fastball, an easy 95, 97, a wipeout type slider. And so you simplify the mechanics. You go out into the bullpen. You work on a couple of things. You go in, have some success over some shorter periods of time. And all of a sudden, look what he's done. Two and two. Now that fastball slider, a great combination for him. Occasionally a change up. At two and two. Get there. A two two count here on Ben. And he is out on strikes. One away. Well, let's take a quick look at that Indians defense brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source. In the outfield left to right, we have Michael Brantley, Michael Warren, and David Murphy across the infield third to first. Lonnie Chisenhall, Jose Ramirez, Mike Avilas, and Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes back behind the plate. Well, we'll see David DeJesus against the Cleveland right-hander. is in there for a strike. The Rays limited to five hits shut out last night in that one nothing game. And the first three hitters in the Rays lineup last night all against Corey Kluber went one for 12 collectively. Ground ball really is at second. De Jesus is out number two. How good was Corey Kluber last night? Well, what a great matchup that was. Yeah, Kluber really was. was just outstanding, and so was Chris Archer. It's a shame that uh, one of those guys had to be involved on the losing side of an effort like that. And Fluber made a strong case for the Cy Young Award, 18 wins this year. And even though it was a loss pinned on Archer, he finished his season very strong and with an outstanding effort last night. Longoria lifts a popper foul. Santana's after it. So is Gomes. And that's going to be out of reach. 
Santana with that mitt over the top railing. Right in front of Ryan Hannigan and Derek Shelton there. So Longoria up there with a one strike count. You know, going back to that ball game last night, Joe Madden said that it was Chris Archer's best start of the season. You know, the way mm -hmm. that he had to bear down, you know, he may have had some better lines than that, but pitching in a one to nothing game against a guy like Corey Kluber, you have maximum concentration. Your little antenna is up so high because you know that every pitch the game could turn. And that's what happened. One missed pitch in the first inning, and that was the ball game. But boy, was he great after that. We see Santana and Archer having a little fun. Archer was on that front row as well. And a swing and a miss. Longoria out on strikes. Two strikeouts in the inning. One, two, three, go the Rays. Terry Francona's lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Michael Bourne's going to lead it off. Then Jose Ramirez and Michael Brantley. Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes, and David Murphy down the middle. Jason Giambi gets a start as the DH. Lonnie Chisenhall at third. Mike Avili's the second baseman, hits ninth. Well, taking the mound tonight for the Tampa Bay Rays going to be right-hander Alex Colome. You can see four appearances on the year, two starts. And, Dwayne, you mentioned in the open that Alex Colome, the majority of his career he's been a starter. The numbers will bear that out. As a starter for the Rays, 1-0 with a .73 earned run average, just one earned run given up in 12 and a third innings. The two relief appearances have not gone as well. Yeah, not so good. He will spend some time this winter. Uh, pitching winter ball is the plan, and and a good part of that, uh, they hope to have him out of the bullpen. Here's Michael Bourne. The first pitch is a strike around the knees to get the bottom of the first inning underway. Two change up right there, and and Dwayne, that that makes a ton of sense because when you start thinking about rebuilding a bullpen going into 2015, Alex Colome, you mentioned that in the open too, out of options, mm -hmm. got a tremendous arm. You got to find a spot for him, and it not won't necessarily be as a starter. It's going to be tough competition for that spot. Ground ball headed to second for Forsythe, one away. So the last thing that you want to do is, obviously, he's going to come into camp and compete for a starter's spot. But if he doesn't get it, you don't want opening day to be the first time that he's pitched out of the bullpen in a meaningful situation. Mm -hmm. yep. So it makes sense. Winter ball, highly competitive. 
get him down there and let him work out of the pen and get used to what that life is like. Yeah, and if all goes well for him, he might win a spot in the rotation. But if not, and he can handle that bullpen role, he would give the Rays, number one, a strong arm in the bullpen and a guy who could give them multiple innings out of that bullpen. Here's Ramirez and a bunt. Oh. Calame, a little confusion there. He was down off the mound and then started to veer away. And boy, on a play like that, any hesitation means trouble. The bunt was not up one line or the other. It was closer to right back at the pitcher's mound. So you had Colome coming off, Hannigan heading out, and they both start to peel off right there. Nobody really taking command of that. That was Colome's ball the entire way, but you see the catcher come bearing out at you. Watch this. Just kind of who's going to take it, and that little indecision right there, base hit. Well, Ramirez has gone from one end of the spectrum to the other in the first inning last night. He homered, accounting for the only run of the game. He bunts his way on here, his first time up in the first inning tonight. And here's Michael Brantley. Brantley has been something else this year for the Cleveland Indians. Pitches a strike at the knees. done it all on base percentage average 20 home runs three shy of 100 driven in for the first and Ramirez back in Ramirez is eight out of nine in the running department with the lead again off first base. He's on the move. Pitch is a ball and the throw hits the runner Ramirez. He's in there safely with a steal. Rays got very fortunate right there. That throw by Ryan Hannigan hits Jose Ramirez. If that skips underneath him, he's on third base. Ben Zobers coming in. A little bit late right there. Not an easy pitch to handle. Up quick with the throw. But this one catches Ramirez and stays in the infield, thus keeping Jose at second base. So just like that, a bunt single and a stolen base. Cleveland with a man in scoring position for Brantley. And he shifts it into center field. On the run is Zobris who makes the catch. Tag at second and advancing to third is Ramirez. Nice play by Ben Zobris. And let's look at the rest of the Rays defense brought to you by Golden Diamond Source in the outfield left to right. Joyce and then of course Zobris and Myers across the infield third to first. Evan Longoria, Nick Franklin back out at shortstop. Logan Forsythe and James Loney. Ryan Hannigan behind the dish. Well, we again this year have seen Zobrist all over the place, making his seventh start of the year in center field. Here is Carlos Santana. The pitch is a strike. by much there it's one and one raise one and three on this road trip 
one and three against the Cleveland Indians in the season series. Cut a foul ball out of play. He's in 76 and 84. Cleveland, the exact opposite of that. 84 and 76. The Indians eliminated from any wild card hopes with the Oakland victory last night. Bit away. Fastball mid 90s, and the count is 2 2. That's that big arm that you talk about with Colome. He's got the, the fastball, the slider, the changeup. He's got the workable pitches. For him, it's about commanding the ball in the strike zone, and that's going to be important for him as a starter or as a reliever, especially if you're talking about a very important role coming out of that bullpen. He needs to command his pitches because, as you can see, another young pitcher with a great arm. Now, if he's going to come in out of the bullpen in the middle of an inning, you need instant command in those situations. And that's what hurt him his last time out in that relief appearance against the Chicago White Sox. He went an inning, gave up four earned runs coming into the middle of an inning. Just couldn't command that ball enough to be effective. There's a line on his relief outing against Chicago. 30 pitches, which 18 were strikes, touch for four runs in an inning. And, 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 you know, and he had said, listen, I'm not used to coming out of the bullpen. And coming out in the middle of an inning means that you're kind of at times rushing to get ready. And you got to come right in immediately out of the stretch with someone else's runner on base. It's a different game. And that's inside. So the count is full. That relief outing as opposed to the start he made against the Yankees. He gave up six hits, no runs, and walked one in six and two thirds. And the 3 2. He strikes him out. They leave a man at third. No runs, a hit, and that man left. We're headed into the second inning. No score from Cleveland. Ball on Sun Sports brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. By Checkers. Checkers has three favorites in one box. The $2 shrimp and chicken bites and prize box. Only at Checkers. And by Bert Smith Volkswagen. Tampa Bay's home of driving excitement. 
visit BertSmithVW.com. On to the second inning here in Cleveland. James Loney leads off here for the Rays against Carlos Carrasco. Pitch is down and in. James Loney has matched his single season high hits total with 172. He reached that with the Dodgers in 2008. You know, with James Loney's approach at the plate, you're, you're shocked that he's not hit 200. The 200 mark. Mm -hmm. Talk about Michael Brantley so close for the Indians. James Loney, 172. It's ahead in the count, 3 and 0. Oh. Brantley needs just one more hit for the Indians to get to 200. And a walk on four pitches to Loney. And that is an oddity. You know, we talked about the stretch of starts for Carrasco since August the 10th. And in that time frame, counting the first inning of tonight's game, it's been 62 and a third innings. And that just his ninth walk in that time frame to get, go along with 70 strikeouts. So he has been strikeout to walk ratio has been off the charts and a strike throwing machine very rarely see him go four straight out of his own well, will myers it's a strike and the rays have the leadoff man on they have been in a scoring drought again they've gone 17 innings since their last run scored and they've scored only two runs now in their last 27 innings. Well, this is what plagued this team early in the season and why they find themselves at the bottom of the heap in the American League in run scored. Yeah, they may wind up scoring the fewest runs in club history. That's hard to believe because yep. there have been some awful Tampa Bay teams prior to the race, back in the Devil Ray days. Mm -hmm. you go back to the first year in 98, they scored 620 runs. The Rays right now have 608 runs scored. You're going to have to go above and beyond your comfort level to do it. Myers fouls it back. 2-2. Two -two. Well, that's what Joe Madden, one of the things that he's already earmarked as must do yep. on the must do list find a way to come up with more offense well this, this latest offense uh, blackout and then giving up all those runs in the Boston series and the Red Sox hadn't scored any runs but now they're ahead of the Rays by quite a margin 11 runs they're 14th the Rays 15th the Yankees 13th well, how about that who would have ever thought that you know, the AL East, for how long has been a slugging division? Yep. Where you were gonna, you're going to go in there and you talk about, boy, it's tough to pitch in the AL East. Not this year. Outside of Baltimore, Toronto will give you some problems here or there, but New York, Boston, Tampa Bay have been anemic on offense. 3-2 to Will. And he is out on strikes. Strikeout number three by Carrasco. A little closer look at what Carrasco has done here in Cleveland. Well, you see this right here. Off to a, a bad start. Started the season in the rotation and goes to the bullpen. Look what he did out of there. 26 appearances. Good record. Very good ERA. Learned some things about himself. His approach. And all of a sudden, with a fresh, clear mind and some success under his belt, he comes out August the 10th and has torn it up. Now Nick Franklin. He's getting a look at him at shortstop here in the closing days of the season. He's played some second for the Rays. Now it's short again. Two-zero count. 
Franklin in the major leagues has played mostly second base. Coming up through the Seattle system, he played a lot at shortstop, a little less at second. And the Rays are going to look at him here in the last few games at short. Two and one the count. Been a struggle for Will Myers. You see him talking with Jamie Nelson there. And for the Rays to do what they want to do, his production has to turn around next year somehow, some way. I, I think that that's one of the things that Joe has in mind when he thinks about increased offense in 2015 is Will Myers must come around. He must, you know, when he came up as a rookie, 88 games, he had 293, 13 home runs. It's been a big regression this year, part of it approach. Injury didn't help, but even before that, things weren't going very well. Franklin out on strikes, that pitch, good bite down and in. That's that hard slider. Yeah, and, and when you're geared up to fight off 95, 97, and he's going to come in with a slider, you think, got to start a quick, and then it's too late. It just disappears. But well, that's exactly what you're going to need. You're not going to be able to go out and, you know, free spend. You're going to need guys to kind of come back around and give you that production that you thought you were going to get this year. Well, with the, the way production is down across the board, any of these teams who find a guy who can hit, he's going to be a big to me. Oh, yeah. so you're going to you're going to wind up overpaying either in salary, probably both, if you have to make a deal. In what you have to give up for, but certainly in salary, any way you look at it. Strike the count on Matt Joyce. It's really been amazing when you look at the across the board, and you know, we talked about that last week on the homestand how you know, run production, batting average, all of that's down. You're, you're getting back into the you know the 1970s kind of run production where people were really concerned if you go far enough back that was the reason the designated hitter was even thought of and entertained and implemented they were concerned about the lack of offense in the game think about if you're a guy right now who's a 260 hitter with 25 and 80 you're a slugger oh yeah you're a slugger mm -hmm. you're, you first of all if you have a 260 batting average you're already above average yep. in hitting at 260 right you know and, and then you're 20 home runs 80 plus runs driven in that's a big year only at first with a one two count on Matt Joyce this one is down two 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 now on Matt. And he takes strike three. And he's not happy with that call. The choice, a little word with uh, DJ Rayburn there. And so two strikeouts in this inning as well. It's another look at that pitch. No score.
back out on the mound for his second inning of work tonight. You guys mentioned earlier about Colome's plan in the offseason. The pitch for the Dominican Winter League. He's planning to go down to Escaguido to uh, pitch with them uh, maybe in around the month of November if the Rays approve it. Now, here's the thing with Colome. As opposed to a lot of pitchers who go from a starter to potentially in the bullpen, he's really embracing it. He feels like he can let that fastball live in shorter stints, and he's actually excited about the opportunity to work out of the bullpen. Now, he doesn't want to be out of the picture for the possible rotation in 2015, but he's a guy that really seems like Kind of like Wade Davis when the Rays made that transition that really is excited about what could happen when he moves to the shorter innings out of the bullpen. All right, Todd, thank you very much. Jan Gomes will lead off the bottom of the second inning and the first pitch from Colome here is a strike call on the outside corner. You know, Todd there in the uh, setting fall sun. Yeah. And the fall setting behind him. Bright colors. A, certainly a man for all seasons. I mean, look at him with the with the fall camo on. For a second there, I thought it was the tops of the trees that were talking. About. <laughs> but with the knowledge that was dropped, we knew it was Todd Callis. Yep, that's right. <laughs> There's a reason both Callis and knowledge start with a K. They're interchangeable. And here I thought a whole, the whole time that knowledge started with an N. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you're the lead in the play, and sometimes you're just a tree. Again, profound. Two I'm balls and a strike. I'm going to <laughs> contemplate the rest of the, that, the rest of this half inning. I'm done. And look at him go. There he is, walking. Well, in this case, away from the sunset. Two one here on the Cleveland catcher. And a broken bat on that ground ball foul. Takes the count to 2-2. Two, two. Well, well, think about that. And, and that's where, you know, Alex Colome has said, listen, I've been a starter my whole career. I'm not used to this relieving type situation. You know what? Wade Davis, we mm -hmm. knew. I mean, he made no bones about the fact that he wanted to be a starter. It wasn't in the cards for him for a, a time. He went to the bullpen. And now look, one yeah. of the most dominant setup guys you'll see in the game. Mm -hmm. So you never know how it will turn out. You get an opportunity to pitch in the big leagues, you seize it. And a lot of time left in the career of Wade Davis. And one would hope the same for Alex Colome. Nice pitch there. He gets Gomes on strikes, picks up his second strikeout. Now this is the plus stuff speaking to you right here, down and away with the off-speed delivery. And Gomes just cannot hold up, chases it out of the zone. And you never know. Sometimes you go out to the bullpen, you do great work out there, and then you get an opportunity to start again. You know, you make it known. I'd love to get a chance. If you if you stay here with the Rays, it's a year or two down the road, another organization. You know what you've done, though, by going to the bullpen and doing good work out there? You've made yourself more valuable and more versatile, where a team now can view you in any role. Yeah, and you have a much better idea of what the major league experience is all about. You can go to AAA and be successful there year after year but at some point you're going to cross that bridge and gather the experience that even working out of the bullpen would give a guy like Colome. you come to appreciate the bullpen and what those guys do for you out there I think that's something that's helped out Carlos Carrasco mm -hmm. and when he's come back and, and been so successful in, you know since coming back into the rotation at the beginning of August that time out in the bullpen teaches you some things you learn some things and then you you come back into the rotation and there you go Alame after getting Gomes on that great slider has fallen behind Murphy now it's three and one David Murphy formerly with the Texas Rangers spent some time on the sideline this year with an oblique injury Strokes it into right, hanging up for Will Myers, who makes the catch. And that will be out number two. You, you remember when that was one of the knocks on, on Will Myers was need to work on your outfield defense. Well, I'll tell you something. I think he's taken that to heart because that, that wasn't an extraordinary play. It was a nice play, but we've seen him. It brings to mind some of the plays that he's made out here in the last couple of weeks to finish out this season. Well, two up, two down. Now the designated hitter, Jason Giambi. Oh, 
goes after the first one. Hits a towering fly ball. Not all that deep to right for Myers, and it's a 1-2-3 second inning. We're headed into the third. No score in this game. Indians squaring off tonight and in this game and all season tires plus donates a hundred dollars to the pediatric cancer foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. Ryan Hannigan will open the third inning for the Rays against the right hander Carlos Carrasco. Morgan Forsyth will hit second and then back around to the top of the order. Ben Zobris. And again into center field. Michael Bourne is there to catch it. One pitch, one out of the third. And now Logan Forsyth. Logan getting a, another start. This one at second base again. You know, this is another guy, and you're not sure what Logan's role will be next year, but this is another guy who could give you a bump offensively. It's been yep. an up and down, more down for Logan this year. Got off to a really slow start, a little bit of a slump right now. Yeah, it's really been three offensive seasons for him because he really struggled at the beginning. Then he got very hot, mm -hmm. and recently, you know, in the last six weeks, he's hit 129. Yeah. Yep. He's I, a better hitter than that. He is. He is. And we, we've seen glimpses of it. That stretch that you were talking about. One ball, one strike. Yeah, if you break him down in the middle when he was hot, you know, here's a guy who hit 330 over an extended period of time. So he's gone from that 330 stretch to almost 130. Two one here the count on Logan. Well, there's the breakout. That's what you're talking about. A lot of the damage done in the middle of the season. But bookends have not been pretty. And over to first. So two gone here in the third. Rays would like to say thanks again to all the fans for another fun season. Glad that you've enjoyed the new additions this year, including the porch and center field and the Rays flex packs. Keep checking back throughout the offseason for more information about next year's concerts, promotions, and special events. First 
pitch to Ben Zobrist as a strike. Showing that ability to start changing sequences, and Carrasco starts Ben with a very good curveball. Off the plate in, one and one. When you have those different levels of velocity that you can hit, you've got your fastball 95, 97. We've seen the slider, you know, at 90, the change up hard too, and then all of a sudden the curveball at 82. Chopper, third base, oh, wow. grabbed by Chinson Hall. Got him. Boy, what a throw. Chinson Hall to Santana. Zobris robbed of a potential base hit right there by the Cleveland third baseman. Off balance throw on the money. in Cleveland. Cold Heart Facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. The Rays also have had essentially three distinct seasons in one. They had the worst record in the major leagues by four games through June the 10th and then turned it around and had the best from the 11th of June to the 15th of August and then a blackout of offense here from the middle of August forward. And lowest total in the, in the American League in that time frame. 3.2 runs a game. You're just not going to win too many ball games with that kind of run support. And for another tremendous year pitching. You know, when you look at the Rays and what their starters have been able to do, they're second in the American League in starters ERA yeah. with a losing record. Yeah, under 500. Unbelievable. Pitching has been there again this year for the Rays for the most part. Had some issues early, but that was corrected. No bullpen situation, but overall, an outstanding year for the Rays. A team ERA of 3.56, and the rotation, as you mentioned, just outstanding. Second best ERA in the American League, but three games under 500. For the rotation. Every time we talk about this Rays team coming into a season, you say, well, the, the starting pitching and the pitching overall, they give you hope. Yeah. And they do. But there's got to be more to it because they blew a season in 2012 where the starters right at the top of the heap in ERA and did not make the postseason. It's Franklin back in second from shortstop, makes the throw. Chisenhall is out of there. Boy, what a play he made. Wow. To end the top of the third. That was a big league play and more. What was impressive was he was off the line against Ben Zobris. And he goes over, fields the ball flawlessly, and throws in one motion, moving away towards his own dugout all the way across the time. No hesitation at all on this throw. Watch how quickly he gets rid of it. Just like, oh, yeah, no big deal. 
Just turn and flip it over there. That is a tough, tough throw right on the money. Pitch outside. 1 0. Yeah, that's a, an Evan Longoria, a Robin Ventura type play right there. Pulled off by Chisholm Hall. My ball into left. Joyce will come in. Out goes Franklin, but it's Joyce to make the catch. It's shallow left. Two up, two down in the bottom of the third for Cleveland. Michael Bourne. Maybe Martinez directing traffic there from the Rays dugout defensively. Hey, you know what? You, you got to be happy with how alert he looked. None the worse for wear celebrating his the birthday. 50th. Yeah. Look at that. Still at it. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. <laughs> <laughs> he shared the birthday date yesterday with Chris Archer. on that one. 0 2. Alex Cobb will be pitching tomorrow. Birthday boys one day removed. I like Chris Archer's comment about his start last night said he was happy way through the ball but he's never going to walk away satisfied with a loss. Mm -hmm. That takes care of Michael Bourne third strikeout of the game for Colome. We go to the fourth, no score. We go to the fourth inning tonight. Rays and the Indians, no score. David De Jesus opens the inning against the right hander, Carlos Carrasco. De Jesus grounded out his first time. Victimized last night in the sixth inning, got a good play for the second baseman of Phillies. He went 0 for 4 to Jesus. A little low. The count is 1 and 1.
Ground ball, deep short. Ramirez, low throw. Santana tried to swipe it and could not come up with it. The Jesus is aboard. When you think about how important a first baseman with a slick glove is, and Carlos Santana, that's a tough play, but when you're able to scoop, that's you hide so many plays like this. A nice play by Ramirez. It's going to be a tough one moving to his right. Needs a little help over there from Santana, who's just not able to give it to him. It's one of those in-between hops, tough to judge. So base hit for De Jesus to open the inning. Rays for the second time in an inning, put the leadoff hitter aboard. Evan Longoria at the plate. Strike one. Evan came into the game two of six in his career against Carrasco. One of those hits a home run. In Carlos Santana's defense, he's gone from catcher to third baseman, mm. now over to first base. No easy task. Ground ball third. Now this throw into right field. The Rays are going to get men at first and third out of this. Well, Chisinau found himself trying to hurry that throw after a little problem initially. And boy, did he airmail that one. Well, th this is the team that leads Major League Baseball in airs. You saw the scoop attempt by Santana not made. This right here looked like Taylor made double play. That bobble, though, and then throwing off one foot not securing, you know, I think Chisenhall there in rushing this was still going for two. Instead of just securing that first out at second base, the clock starts running quick on him, and he airmails that throw by a wide margin out into right field. Well, 115 errors, four more than Oakland. First and third for the Rays. Here's James Loney. Pitch is a strike. It's the 18th error on Chisholm Hall, and you could make an argument that he could get two errors on that play. Hot shot the other way, out of play. I think they're looking at it as you know what. Both teams are out of it. They've been bad enough. <laughs> one, will, one will suffice. One's good enough right One's now. One's good yeah. enough. <laughs> right after we sung his praises about the play on Zobris to get yeah. out of the third. And wow, what a play that was. But I think all of that started with a little issue to begin with, and then he tried to hurry, and it was nowhere close. Oh, the front of the Rays dug out this time. Foul. So the Rays with an opportunity. They've gone 19 innings without a run. Nobody out first and third. Only a take down and in. One ball, two strikes. DJ Rayburn calling the balls and strikes. A young umpire just 37. He's in Tennessee, and he has little by little developed a, a pretty solid reputation. He calls a, a strike a strike and a ball a ball. He's among the leaders in uh, correct calls, and he calls Loney out on strikes. It's six strikeouts for Carrasco. What a big pitch here by Carrasco. Loney just trying to put this ball in play and play to run for the Rays, and he drops a curveball to the outer edge at the knees. James Loney, that's all he could do was turn and walk back to the dugout. What a big pitch. You know, there have been a couple calls tonight, and uh, Joyce had one down in the second inning that just was a strike, and that one just was a strike, but a strike nevertheless. Yeah. Well, and, and not only call a ball a ball and a strike a strike, but the borderline pitches, borderline means it's on the border. Strike. Yep. Mm -hmm. Look to call strikes, and that's what he's doing. Will Myers cut the miss, strike one. You know, that's one of the arguments that you could make for opening the game up a little bit. 
you, you talk about time of games. And that's one thing they could do. And I think Rayborn has that approach to calling balls and strikes. Most of those pitches that catch any part of the zone, I think he's ready to call a strike on. Broken bad base hit the other way. The Jesus will score. Longoria digs for third ahead of the throw. And the Rays get a run to take a 1 0 lead. Myers picks up his 35th run batted in. Now, very fortunate there with the long reach. That ball right off the end of the bat. You see it just sheer. But you know what? You find an open hole on the right side. It dribbles out into right field. The Rays do get that run. And also, Longoria is able to get over to third base. Two hits. And an error. And the Rays have a run. Still men at first and third. One out. And here's Nick Franklin. All one away. Franklin, a strikeout victim in the second inning when. Carrasco walked Loney to begin the inning and then struck out the side. Hooked it the other way out of play. One and one. That's what Carrasco needs right here is another strikeout. We've seen his ability to go get him. Already down one nothing in this game. Runners on the corners, just one out. Down in the count. Uh, Carrasco not only has that 95, 96, 97 velocity, but that slider in the changeup. Yeah. Two excellent secondary pitches. And then we see a little curveball, too. Yeah, I mean, he really has the full arsenal. Absolutely right. Covers a lot of ground with velocity. There's a lot of late finish to it. And Franklin out on strikes right there. Another example. Oh, that's dirty. And you know what Carrasco recognized there is when you get a hitter to chase out of the zone early in a count, it makes it that much easier for him to chase with two strikes. You know, every hitter you want to get to two strikes and expand the zone, but when you can expand it early, boy, oh boy, makes it easy. And Franklin. And seen the great fastball, but he's he's also seen a great slider to strike out and a great curveball. I mean, this guy. What's next? He's going to bunt next time. <laughs> he's going to try to lay one down first pitch, and I don't blame him. Matt Joyce swings and misses. Strike one. Well, this is another guy. When you look at his numbers coming into this start with two strikes, because he doesn't walk many guys, mm -hmm. the batting average against him with two strikes is 129, and the on base is 163. You wow. just don't want to get there. You don't have a chance. Over to first. Myers back in. Strikeouts in the inning. The Rays pick up a run. A, an error helped. One nothing. Tampa Bay.
now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag SunSportsFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Well, the Rays get a run in the top half of the inning. Still Carrasco strikes out the side to give him eight strikeouts in this game through the front four. But the all-important run that was scored. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to score. Yes. Now hold them. That's it. That's it. Hey, listen, you dropped a one-to-nothing game last night. Why not win one tonight? Yeah, the Rays finally, after 19 scoreless innings, get a run. The number two hitter in the Cleveland lineup, Jose Ramirez, who accounted for the run last night for the Indians. We'll open the bottom half of the frame. Then Michael Brantley and Carlos Santana. Which is a strike call. Mayor has butted his way on in the first inning. Bouncing ball to second this time. Forsyth makes the play. One gone. That will be Michael Brantley. Went 0 for 3 last night. Been in the top 10 and slugging percentage, on base percentage. Same thing, batting average started the series third in the league in hitting. Colomay's pitch to him is outside. Single in the center gets him to 200 hits on the year. Had a great season in front of these Cleveland fans, and they respond in kind. Especially when you flash up on the big board that it's the first time that an Indian's reached 200 hits since 1996. Those are the glory years. And Kenny Lofton did it. It's quite a run in the mid-90s here. And now Carlos Santana with a runner at first and one out. Field side, that's a foul ball. Boy, he had home run distance to spare, but he pulled it foul. Strike one. Now he's still ticked off from his first at bat where he swung right over the top of a good fastball by Colome to strike out and end that inning. A little bit too quick on that swing. 27 home runs. Tops in this Cleveland lineup in that department. Brantley back in at first. Rays with the shift on for Santana. He had a base hit last night against the ship and the left. Oh, 
One and one. Balls and a strike. Raised with two hits. The Indians now have two hits. Second time through the order for Alex Colome. That's going to be a strike. And it's two and two. Aggressive to call strikes. This one right here, a two and one off speed offering. And that ball a little bit off the plate, but you better be ready to hit when you come to the plate. DJ Rayburn behind. And keep your eye on Michael Brantley, too, because the year he's had, we've talked about him swinging the bat. He's also 23 out of 24 in the running department. The pitch is up, a fastball up and away. And the count is full. John Gomes on deck. Bad seats tonight. At least I was on the aisle. Three two ground ball first fair out at first and now Loney down to second and they have the rundown and Brantley is tagged out by Forsyth to retire the side. This ball game heads into the fifth one nothing Rays. bat of Santana that turned out to go 3-5 on the uh, double play with Longoria getting put out on the second out. 2014 group party areas at Tropicana Field sold out at a record pace this past season. They're now on sale for the 2015 season. Don't miss out and get your group in on the action with your own exclusive area. For more information, call 888-FAN-RAYS or visit RaysBaseball.com. So Colome through four innings, 44 pitches, and a 1-0 lead. His battery mate, Ryan Hannigan, will open the fifth inning. The 
which is a strike. And again, the line to center his first time. Pitch in there to Hannigan. Line drive into left. That will stay up for Brantley. So the second line drive off the bat of Hannigan caught tonight. He's 0 for 2. Second baseman, Logan Forsyth. Now Logan Forsyth. Logan out third to first, his first time up. Oh, come on, four yeah. Strike one, that's the fastball. Two. side quickly behind in the count. Tommy Carrasco, when you're aggressive swinging against him on pitches that are down in the zone, you don't stand much chance because of the finish on both the fastball and the breaking. And another one right there. Mm. Forsyth out on strikes. That's nine for Carrasco. And. and Talked about it a little bit earlier in the game when you get a, a hitter to expand his zone early in the count, more apt to do it when he's got two strikes and he goes even further out after that pitch right there. That's when a hitter or when a pitcher knows he's got you. And if you've got command to move that pitch further away, you got a chance for even a bigger chase. Carrasco has that ability and he got that swing. Well, he's had some big strikeouts the last two starts he's made, and another one tonight. 12 strikeouts, two starts ago against Houston, and nine against Kansas City his last time out, and he lost that game two to nothing. How about two this? outs into the fifth inning here, and he has nine. Yeah, well, I mean, his last three starts, his run support average was 1.19, and it's not going up. So he's had to kind of do it all himself. You know, he beat Houston two to nothing and then lost to Kansas City two to nothing. Three and oh the count on Zobrist. Rays have a one nothing lead in this game. And Zobrist looks at a strike. Three and one. Ball four, a two out walk, the second issued tonight by the Cleveland right hander. Tonight's GMC big matchup. The lowest earned run averages since the All Star break. Alex Cobb leading the charge, pitching tomorrow. Luber, who pitched last night, and Carrasco, fourth on that list, who's pitching tonight. Who knew this town could hold so many tremendous starters all at once? <laughs> We have you in the bullpen ready to go at any moment here. Like I said, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we could spring you from the booth, though. Couldn't do that quite yet. I'm, I'm stuck here now. <laughs> the, the, the days of the, that fantasy are long gone. <laughs> no more comebacks. See what DeJesus can do. There's a 
shot foul beyond the Rays dugout. Strike one. Well, you know, we talked earlier about Alex Colomay and the potential for working in the bullpen, winter ball, and how that stacks up. I remember here with the Indians in 97 going into the playoffs when Mike Hargrove you know, got added to the playoff roster for the ALCS, and he put me in the bullpen mm -hmm. and said, be ready from the first pitch. Now, this is the ALCS, which sure. is not your average in everyday game. Mm -hmm. Two innings in, I'm a disaster down there <laughs> pacing back and forth. And I remember sitting down next to Eric Plunk and talking to him and saying, how do you do this job for 162 games? Because we're in the top of the third, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> Different animal pitching yeah. out of the bullpen. Oh, now they throw this one away on a toss to first. Zobris will head to second base on the errant throw by Carrasco. So an error gives the Rays another scoring opportunity. And the Indians just not happy to have the lead in Major League Baseball. They want to distance themselves in the air department. This throw low, Santana cannot make that backhand scoop. Just add another one to the list now at 116. An error played into the Rays run in the fourth, and it gives them another opportunity in the fifth inning. Ground ball back to the mound. Carrasco takes this about four fifths of the way to first <laughs> and lobs it to Santana. One nothing Rays. was eliminated last night with the Oakland A's victory. Here is our Chase wildcard picture right now. Here's what we know. The number one seed in the playoffs will be the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. The number two seed will be Baltimore. The rest still up for grabs. Detroit and Kansas City separated by a game. Oakland and Seattle battling out for the last wildcard spot. The A's only need one more win or one more Mariner loss the last two days to clinch the final spot in the postseason. But Kansas City still has a shot at the division. If they end up tied with the Tigers at the end of the year, they will play a game 163 to determine the AL Central winner. Guys, back to you. Yeah, how about that? And uh, I think uh, Kansas City and Chicago, uh, the last time we checked, were delayed in their game. So the weather could complicated even if the win and loss records don't necessarily complicate it so much
We go to the bottom of the fifth. Here's Jan Gomes. Well, he's had a very good year for Cleveland. Got an extended contract and has responded. Came into this game with a slugging percentage of 476. 21 home runs, 25 doubles, three triples. Two. He's waited all year to come to Cleveland, the final series of the regular season here. We'll make a little earlier trip to Cleveland next year. They'll be here about the third week in June. When the Indians come to the Rays. For four games next year, the last two days in June and the first two days in July. Swing and a miss. Gomes out of there on the fastball. Opening strikeout. He's out on strikes for the second time tonight. Colome just skating right along, continuing to mix his pitches here. He just overpowers Jan Gomes. With the fastball, you see he's got that uppercut swing and missed that by a wide margin. Comes in at 93 miles an hour. Now it's Colomay in his third start here for the Rays and the third time that he's thrown the ball extraordinarily well. David Murphy takes the fastball for a first pitch strike. Colomay, 26 years old, out of the Dominican Republic. Strikes now. Ground ball, nice pitch. Fastball in on him and a ground ball to second. Murphy is out of there. Two gone. So two up, two down. Base is empty for Jason Giambi. Giambi hit a towering fly ball to short right. Myers caught it. In the second inning. Ball, no strikes. He thinks on uh, Giambi's mind right now. Who or what? Giambi. Yeah, you like get on base, slap one yeah. the other way. Yeah, that's, that's Get a rally it. started. Yeah, trying to beat the shift. <laughs> now he'd like to rip one right through or over the shift. Yeah. Oh, he's thinking souvenir. You better believe that. I'll tell you the count now, two and zero. Oh. He's been really a lot of help for Terry Francona mm -hmm. with this Cleveland. And you talk about a, a guy that can bridge that gap between the players and the manager. Listen, he, there was talk. He was up for a potential manager's position out in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Going to give him an interview. He said, I'd, I'd still like to play. There's a strike two and one. You have to think, when you look back over the years, of players who have gone through a career as he has, they have a great value in a clubhouse of younger players trying to establish themselves, really trying to find themselves as to where they fit in on a team and in the, in the grand scheme of things in the game. Guy like that's great. You know, the Rays had a couple of those guys. When you look back at uh, 08, there's another guy. Oh, great yeah. Great to have on your coaching staff. <laughs> yeah. And why not Manny? Sandy yeah. Alomar right there. Well, you, you've got longevity of career. You've got how to handle success, how to handle failure. Can still relate to the younger players. Pretty close right there. Colome thought he had a strike. But he walks Giambi. 
take a look at how close this one was. Now we've seen pitches further off called strikes. And Giambi's thinking, well, now I got to run. It's two outs. Yeah, I got to run on contact. Wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it was more trot. Okay, run. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Here's Chisenhall. He has good pop in his bat. Grounded out his first time. Foul outside of first. Yeah, and that ball, if it was fair, would have been in the middle of James Loney's stance. He was playing right on the line. Not holding Giambi on. Not worried about him going anywhere as we kind of mentioned. <laughs> Not real interested in the stolen base at this point. Line drive, base hit right field. With two outs, a walk, and now a single. And for the first time in this game, the Indians have two men aboard at the same time. Second time tonight, they've had a man in scoring position. Lonnie Chisenhall gets that ball out over the plate. See those hands come right directly to the baseball, solid contact. How about the game that he had earlier this year? Oh, all the home runs. Yeah. Nine runs batted in in a game. Yeah, three homers. Yeah, nine RBIs. How about that. This day and age, it's a good month. Actually, it would be a good month. That'd be 18 homers and 54 runs batted in. He hit in fifth. Yeah. There's a strike to the second baseman, Mike Avillis. Left side, his first time. Nice pitch by Colome there for strike two. Just to keep you honest, a slider at 89. And that just opens up everything for Colome. 0-2, you can go back to that pitch. You can climb the ladder. You can do anything you want right here. And there is strike three call. That takes care of the Indians. They leave two. Fifth strikeout for Colome. No runs. One hit, two left, two strikeouts. One nothing raise.
Hold a one nothing lead behind the pitching of Alex Colome. Five innings, five strikeouts, a walk. Colome has now surrendered three hits in this game, and the Rays got their run in the fourth on a base hit by Will Myers. Broken bat single into right, scored David DeJesus. So we go to the sixth. A nice outing so far for Colome. And for Carrasco, a big strikeout night for the Cleveland right-hander. He has nine strikeouts tonight. Here's Longoria shooting one into left, and there to catch it is Brantley. The first baseman, James. One gone on one pitch here in the sixth. James Loney with a walk and a strikeout tonight. Carrasco walked him on four pitches in the second inning. Got ahead of him and struck him out on a breaking ball in the fourth. Got him looking. That's a strike. Well, it's easy to see how Carrasco has been successful recently. We've seen some great pitching here out of the Indian starters in the first two games of this series. Tremendous arm on Carrasco and pitchability that we've seen. Last night, Corey Kluber, the fastball was jumping. You talk about a guy who knows how to set up a hitter right at the top of the list. Leaks major leagues and strikeouts. But boy, you start to think about the Indians' future. As far as their young starting pitching, mm -hmm. wow. Maloney waves at that one. Fastball. He pumped that one in there at 96. Yeah, and you get the feeling that James Loney was looking for something off speed. Here's what's coming up tomorrow on Rays Live, the pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Alex Cobb will be on the mound and we'll hear from him and a look back at some of the memorable moments of the 2014 season. Day game tomorrow, the wrap up game of the series and the season. Will Myers shoots one up the middle, there's a base hit, a fastball, and Myers returns it right back through the middle. Coming to the plate, shortstop, Nick Franklin. Myers two for three tonight. A fastball out over, that ball was stung. I mean, that, that was a shot that gets through the infield before anybody gets out of their stance. Nick Franklin and it works him in and Franklin's had a tough night with Carrasco. How about that for that base hit for Myers 107.4 off the bat. Uh, and, and I believe every bit of that. I'm telling you that ball was powdered. And we get a lot of home runs that are that close. Now Myers takes off and he is safe at second base. Myers running on that pitch to Franklin gets his fifth stolen base. Now the Indians second in the American League and caught stealing this year. And that throw by Jan Gomes was a little bit to the shortstop side of second base. And so it has to be pulled a long way to try to get Myers. You got to need a perfect throw here. We see this got to backhand it, then reach all the way over. And, my, and you know what? To Myers' credit, he goes to the back edge of the bag. He forces that tag plane to be very long. And he gets in. And he did get a good jump on Carrasco, who's been pretty good uh, against opposing base runners this year. But a nice jump by Will. And he picks up a stolen base. He's a long strider. You know, he can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. Better speed than you would think. 
Franklin lifts a fly ball into center field. Michael Bourne makes the catch, and the Rays leave a man at second. Bottom of the inning coming. It is 1 0 Tampa Bay. Special occasion by purchasing a game used lineup card, a baseball, a base, or autographed items from your favorite Rays player. One of a kind items that can be purchased at RaysBaseball.com slash game day. Rays fans here in Cleveland. Temperature in the mid 60s, a beautiful night. And it will be the top of the order. Michael Bourne. Colome starts his third time through the Cleveland lineup, and Bourne bounces it back. And yeah, this will be a big test. Anytime you go through a lineup for a third time, these hitters have seen you twice. Most of them have probably seen all of your pitches at this point. On the count. And on top of that, in the back of your mind, you're saying to yourself, it's a one-nothing ball game. <laughs> you, know, you, you, gotta, you gotta just like last night, you gotta be locked in on every pitch. Two and one. Four last night. Nothing good two so far in this game. Horn missed some time early with hamstring issues. And he's ahead in the count, three and one. You know, that's the concern, too, with, with Michael Bourne. You know, he's still owed a lot of money by Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And once you start to have hamstring issues and they're recurring, mm -hmm. you're starting to get up there and age a little bit. That That's tough. Yep. You end up having the, the back of your legs full of scar tissue. In the center field, and there to catch it is Ben Zobrist. So that's the first out. Bourne 0 for 3. A good start for Alex Colome. He's trying to make a case for himself to go into spring training and be one of the favorites to nail down the fifth starter spot. Pretty good tonight. Yep. It's set in the open. You 
want to make a lasting impression being one of those guys that's going to be under consideration. He's done that. He's been good in his two previous starts for the Rays this year, and this one may be the best so far. Well, no, the count to Jose Ramirez, who has one of the three hits surrendered by Colome, and that was a bunt single. A little indecision on the part of Colome and Hannigan playing that bunt single in the first. And a line drive just out of the reach of Franklin in the left. Boy, that would have been some play. One out single, and Ramirez has his second hit tonight. Well, Nick Franklin got a pretty good jump on that. Thought that he was going to have a chance to do this. Boy, that ball hit just hard enough and slicing just enough to get out of his reach. And then Jose Ramirez, who... They had the big home run last night. The bun hit earlier. And now in this one-run game, another guy to keep an eye on. Eight out of nine stolen bases. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can see how this Cleveland club could be pretty interesting. You know, the Rays only get a chance to see them one series at home, one here on the road. So you don't see them a lot, but we've seen them here a game and a half. An interesting team. Well, they're stuck at the catching position. Chisholm Hall emerged this year for, for the Indians. Finally took a hold of that third base job for the most part. Michael Brantley, a huge year. You, you see Ramirez. He's <laughs> been pretty good the game and a half that we've seen him. Mm -hmm. He's hit the other way. A bunt hit and a home run covering all the bases. And here is Michael Brantley. One for two tonight. He takes the pitch for a strike. A start and a stop over at first by Ramirez. Larry Francona. Skipper here in Cleveland. Hannigan advances the count to two balls and a strike. Two to Brantley. That's a mature pitcher's pitch. Tough hitter at the plate. Two one off speed delivery right to the edge. It's being unpredictable. Jams him and a little humpback liner caught by Forsythe. 
So nicely done by Colome to get a very tough hitter in Michael Brantley. That was a fantastic job after that 2-1 offering. The fastball in. You slow a hitter's eyes down just a little bit. Then you surprise him with something good and hard in. Can't get the head out. One out closer to getting out of this inning. Now Carlos Santana, another tough bat. Big time power, 0 for 2 tonight. Back in at first. There's Peralta up in the Rays bullpen. Colome working in the sixth inning here, a little over 70 pitches. Inside, 1 0. who won 92 games last year obviously going to fall short of that and one thing that they didn't do quite as well this year as they did last year was take care of business inside their own division they had had a lot of trouble last year with the Tigers they did get better against the Tigers still a losing record against the Tigers but they did not beat Minnesota and the White Sox as often as they had before they owned those teams yeah. last year. They were a collective 30 and 8 against the Twins and the White Sox last year. And this year they've gone 21 and 17 against them. That's a, that's a nine game swing? Mm -hmm. I mean, a nine game swing. What are they back in the division? Five games? Or starts to go, stops, and it's popped up. Boy, and Major League pop-up. Loney waiting for this one, and he's got it to retire the side. A man left. We go to the seventh, and the Rays lead one to nothing. Baseball on Sun Sports is brought to you by Blue Bell Ice Cream. By Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. And by Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology. When cancer strikes, strike back with CyberKnife. Available exclusively at Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology.
the Rays trying to get a win tonight and put themselves into a position to make this a meatloaf series. Meatloaf, please. That's what the Rays are looking for in this series. By the way, it's Meatloaf's birthday today. I've come full circle, Dwayne. I'm a huge fan <laughs> of Meatloaf. <laughs> meatloaf born in 1947 yep. on this day. I'm not. I'm listen. I'm not talking about the kind where you take a meat product and shove it to a pan and bake it. Still not a fan of that. Don't understand <laughs> the concept. Never will. But more of the the singer song. I got you. Okay. It's well, I'm classics. sure that's what that sign is all about. Well, your entertainment preference as opposed <laughs> to your dining pleasure. I've tried. <laughs> Remember, I think last night that said no more meatloaf, <laughs> please. <laughs> Three and out of Joyce. I think there was a shout out to my mom on that board too. Now she's gone and the no's gone, and apparently I want more. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, good. See, and I mean your face looks like you want more. <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> it's the one time that that face fits. <laughs> Three and one. Yeah, I'm afraid that's here to stay. <laughs> it's out there now. It, yeah. Well, if it's on a if it's on a oversized popsicle out there. <laughs> Joyce draws a walk, and the Rays put the leadoff man on. Loney walked to open the second inning. DeJesus single to open the fourth. That's when the Rays scored their run. And now Joyce, the leadoff walk in the seventh for Ryan Hannigan. Breathing room. Yeah, the Rays looking for a little of that. Lead off walk. How many times do we talk about those and how often they come around to score? It's another thing Colome has been able to do tonight through six is deny the Indians a leadoff man to get on base. Now Hannigan. Bounces it to third. Chisenhall on the money at second this time. And over to first. 5-4-3. And just as quickly as the Rays get the leadoff man, he is erased on the double play. You know what? Nice effort there by Matt Joyce going into second base. You know, this game at the end of the day doesn't mean a whole lot besides professional pride in playing the game the right way. And he goes in aggressively at Avilas. He's trying to get there. You can see him head down to try to break it up forces an awkward throw, flat-footed throw. They do get the double play, but Matt Joyce still playing this thing all the way through. This is exactly the way you should do it. Logan Forsythe tracks this one in at the knees for a strike in the 90s fastball. Isn't that the way? I mean, you hear all these about these professional athletes like, hey, listen, if you're playing tiddlywinks, this guy wants to take you yeah. out. Well, you're still playing Major League Baseball. That's right. You're still on TV. There's a lot of people here at the stadium watching it. So let's go. Fly ball toward the right field corner. Murphy back at the line and just into foul territory makes the catch. Seventh inning stretch coming for the Cleveland fans. One nothing Rays.
into a one nothing lead. When you talk about bright spots of the 2014 season, certainly one of them has to be the combination that Joe Madden likes to call Jake in the box. Jake McGee and Brad Boxberger in the back end of the Rays bullpen. They've done the job all season long, and here are their thoughts as they assess their 2014 campaign. Yeah, I mean, it's always um, a goal to be pitching in the back of the bullpen. Um, and the way it's been working out for us to be able to go 8-9 uh, for a lot of the games has been helpful for both of us, just kind of feeding off of each other and uh, having success in that role. Yeah, I was really happy with how I transitioned to that. But for me, you know, I've been up since 2010, and I think for me I kind of like grew into that role more. And like when I went into the ninth, I wasn't overwhelmed really. You know, I think some of the guys, when they get rushed into the ninth inning too quickly, I think it's just – takes them off guard a little bit but for me I just treat it like any other inning same batter so and guys even with a one run one run lead uncertain if we will see Boxberger tonight possibly McGee but Brad Boxberger with a heavy workload Joe Madden wasn't sure if he was going to be used in this series but here's one stat in addition to the others those guys have shined this year Boxberger faced nine bases loaded situations this year 0 for 9 six strikeouts and a double play back to you how about that it's been fun watching those two guys develop at the back end of games for the Rays. Here we go into the bottom of the seventh, and Jan Gomes takes ball one. You know, Boxberger stepping up, setting a, a club record for strikeouts for a guy out of the bullpen. Well, his emergence has been really fun to watch. And, and Jake McGee, uh, not as surprising because Jake's been around here coming up through the System, our PNC star achiever, and really the star achievers. Yep. In this case, we have we've watched Jake McGee develop into that closing role, and Boxberger coming over here in the San Diego deal has really stepped up and has had a great year. Well, he's got that fastball that in the mid 90s with a good changeup and good command. He forces you to cover a lot of range in the velocity with two pitches that look just like each other. So he, you've got your own issues to deal with with Boxberger. And Jake McGee, you know, he comes in, you know he's going to give you the big fastball, but two things. Number one, you got a glimpse of his development of a second pitch with the curveball as the season went on. I think you'll see more and more of that. He's always going to be a fastball first guy. You'll see more of the breaking ball, but it's the increased command mm -hmm. that Jake McGee showed that allowed him to thrive at the back end of games. Yeah, there's uh, one thing about throwing strikes, and there's another thing to throw a strike inside that zone exactly where you want to yep. throw it with a specific purpose. He's been able to do that. And to cut the miss, Gomes is out on strikes. Strikeout number six for Colome. Very similar swings, the last two at-bats for Gomes against Colome, and Colome, understanding that, gets him to chase again, and that looks like it might end his night. David Murphy is due, and Joe Madden out of the dugout, so a strikeout here in the seventh inning, and Colome departs. Boy, great job for Alex Colome tonight, six and a third, scoreless.
himself at all. A great job tonight. He'll take this uh, final start here on the next to the last day of the season. Carry that with him into winter ball and then uh, into spring training next year. But if you saw the hand gestures from Joe Madden right there, he gave him the sign for tremendous effort, young man. <laughs> See, tips and signs a lot. Oh, he was outstanding. You know, he showed the fastball, lively fastball. The slider was outstanding. And when you're looking to make a lasting impression heading into the winter, he certainly did that. He was in trouble one time, and that was nothing more than first and second with two outs. He got a strikeout on Mike Avilas in that situation. Great job. And he got the leadoff, man, seven times in this game. Well, that's a great way to start every inning. First pitch strikes and retire the first hitter. You can preach it till you're blue in the face. A lot harder to do. Well, he did that tonight. 69th appearance for Joel Peralta. Cut and a miss. Takes the count to one and one to David Murphy. Murphy's line drive was to right. His ground ball was to second. Play one and two. So for the Rays tonight, one run that came in the fourth. They have a run on three hits, and the Indians no runs on four hits. Piece of that one to stay alive. And extend the at bat. So it's still one and two the count to Murphy. Jason Giambi will be next. Joe is always late Peralta on left handed hitters. Mm -hmm. That ability to throw that split with good finish, the curveball, the fastball, any pitch, any count, any situation. That's long been his mantra. Murphy again stays alive. Fouling that one out of play. So Colome finishes with 79 pitches, six and a third. No runs. He struck out six, walked one, gave up the four hits. And so he leaves with nothing but a positive feeling about the job he did tonight. No question. And how about the efficiency? You mentioned the pitch count into the seventh inning less than 80. Liner in the center a hard hit base hit. Murphy is aboard. You know that that has been one of the things that has plagued Peralta all season long is the inability to get finish on his off speed pitches where we've seen it in the past with good dip at the end and deception. That ball just kind of floats in there. Ends up being 83 miles an hour, same plane, no downward action, and Murphy short strides it right into center field. Yeah, Murphy doesn't have a big stride to begin with, so he's in a position if that pitch stays up to hit it hard, and that's exactly what he did. Now here's Giambi. Strike. Fastball on the inner part of the plate. You don't want to see that thrown up there because that's exactly what he's trying to do right here. You better believe that. Looking to give the Indians a lead with that runner aboard. Giambi going to turn it loose here at the end of the season. Did he go on the appeal? And Honora says no, he held up. So the count is one and one. Four hundred and forty career home runs for Giambi. To 
strike one and two. 20 seasons for Giambi. I remember he first came up, he hit most most of his power was to left center. He hit the ball the other way a lot. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, look at how big he is. Big and strong enough to do that. And a cut and a miss. Giambi out on strikes. Two gone. Another left-handed hitter coming up as Giambi is disposed of. Climbs the ladder right across the letters. 90 miles an hour on this fastball. You see that slight uppercut swing there by Giambi, not able to reach it. Now Lonnie Chisenhall. around the knees. Chisenhall getting his first look at Peralta. Up the right side, foul. Goes to 0-2. Rays protecting a one-run lead. It's Bellavo in the bullpen. He was in the game last night. A hit with a man left. We go to the eighth. One nothing. Tampa Bay. Take a look at tonight's Chevy game summary. It's a 1 3 0 line for the Rays, 0 5 and 2 for Cleveland. Alex Colome, very good tonight. No runs, four hits, and six in a third innings. One walk and six strikeouts. 
Carlos Carrasco, very good for Cleveland. One run, but it was unearned. Ten strikeouts, three walks through seven for Carrasco. Top of the order. And Zobris up here. 0 for 2 with a walk. It's out of play, strike one. Number at third base side, that's going to go foul. It'll stay that way. O2. Peralta followed Colome into this game. It's a base hit into left center field. Brantley over to cut it off, and Zobris will stop it first. Two strike base hit the other way for Ben Zobris. Well, this is a nice job by Ben. Two strikes, follow the breaking ball down. Look at that. And just slap that ball out into left center field. And I think the odds are at about 100% here that Ben Zobris is going to attempt a stolen base. <laughs> he has nine. That's right. The Rays would love to have a guy in scoring position. So things are all in alignment as he tries to get his 10th stolen base of the year. Maybe the one of those stats, double digit stolen bases, double digit home runs for six straight seasons. We saw him try it, try to do that in Boston. And it was a ball that was picked by Christian Vasquez and picked by Xander Bogarts that got him at second base. Initially called safe, went to the review, overturned that. Mm -hmm. the count. Two balls, no strikes. Carlos Carrasco pitching into the eighth inning. To three and zero oh to David De Jesus. There goes the runner. The pitch is a strike, and the throw not in time. There's a steal for Zobrich. His tenth stolen base. He's now in scoring position for David De Jesus, and that's number 10 for Ben Zobrist. So he joins Hanley Ramirez and Andrew McCutcheon as the only players with 10 home runs and 10 stolen bases in each of the last six years. And De Jesus takes strike two, and the count is four. Ground ball will get the runner over to third. So 
And to Jesus advances Zobris with a ground ball to the second baseman. Man at third, one out. So the Rays trying to take advantage of putting the leadoff man on. They had done that in three of the last four innings coming into the ace, so four or five. And five times tonight. They scored a run in the fourth. They're trying to pick up their second run of the night here in the eighth. And here's Evan Longoria. There's a strike to Evan. He's 0 for 3, reached on an error in the fourth. Now two of nine in his career with a home run facing Carrasco. And a ground ball to short, sharply hit with Ramirez in. And Zobris no chance to score on that one. With Ramirez in and the ball hit sharply, Zobris had to remain at third. And he didn't have anywhere to go. That ball was hit right at him. Evan Longoria not happy that he couldn't find a hole, but you see right there, Ramirez looks him back, takes the out. But James Loney is due, and Terry Francona is going to make a pitching change. That's it for Carrasco. Man at third with two outs. Seems it may be coming to an end, but you can still follow the Rays throughout the offseason. Catch the Rays on Facebook and Twitter, as well as Instagram and Pinterest. Get your Rays baseball fix year round and a sneak peek at behind the scenes photos, videos, and more. Like the piping on that cap. It's a good looking Rays cap yeah. there on display tonight. The white with the, uh, I, I'm assuming, the dark blue, mm -hmm. midnight blue. How about selfies with a real camera? Don't see that often. <laughs> there you go. Close ups, too, maybe. <laughs> James Loney will hit against Mark Zipchinski, the lefty on for the 73rd time. Ground ball headed toward the middle. Backhanded by Avili's throw to first. Santana can't come up with the one hop throw, and the Rays get a run to make it two to nothing. Ground ball off the bat of James Loney, and that's enough to get the run home. And boy, Avila's had to go a long way to get to that ground ball. Still had time to get Loney and Carlos Santana this is now the third ball in the dirt that he's had trouble with none of them have been easy but he also has not come up with one of them either this 
this one. He's trying to two-hand anything that he can do to get that final out because that's a run. Will Myers, who drove in the first run in the fourth inning, takes the first pitch for a ball. Two to nothing now, Tampa Bay. One and one. So that base hit for Loney. A career single season high, 173, driving in his 69th run. Two and one now. Team with five hits. Ground ball, right side. This time Avilis to his left, and the throw to first in time to get Myers hustling down that line. Bottom of the eighth coming up. It's two nothing, Rays. Baseball's postseason moves to America's new sports network. Fox Sports One is your new home for baseball's National League Division and Championship Series, and it all begins next Friday. Grant Balfour on here in the eighth inning. Rays hold a two nothing lead. L4 is the third raised pitcher and he makes his 65th appearance. Now Grant encouraged going into the offseason about how he's been throwing the ball lately. I think Joe Madden echoed those sentiments. And he's another guy. You know, you start to think about bounce back seasons. Will Myers on the offensive side, Grant Balfour helping the back end of that raise bullpen. He could do a lot for this team too under contract. Cavillis will lead it off. His second baseman, he's 0 for 2. L4 misses with the first pitch. Fastball away. Grant pitched an inning Thursday, a 1 2 3 inning in Boston. This went by. The Indians second baseman one and one. Two 
two balls and a strike. Field. Zobris right there in just a couple steps. One away as promised earlier in the game. We have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag Sun Sports fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Board. It's to the top of the order, too high. Board in a line drive to center in the sixth inning. It's grounded out, struck out, and lined out. Round ball to first, and a nice backhanded stop and play by Loney. Boy, Loney. Down on his knees to backhand that one and get the out unassisted. That would have been extra bases for sure. Just how many would be the question. James Loney able to get over backhanded on his knees close enough to then just touch the bag. Well done. Two gone in the eighth. Jose Ramirez, the shortstop, and he takes a strike. Ramirez has two hits tonight. Two of the five Cleveland hits, one a bunt single. Down in the count, nothing in two. Two strikes. Melavo, the lefty, Gomes, the right hander, up in the bullpen. Two. He got him a swing and a miss. That takes care of Ramirez. One, two, three. Go the Indians. We head into the ninth. Two nothing Rays.
news and highlights from the MLB playoff races. Plus the latest from college football and the NFL. Watch Fox Sports Live on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Ball game heads into the ninth with the Rays holding a two to nothing lead. And Kyle Crockett is the new pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Jensky came on for a third of an inning, gave up a hit. And now it's Crockett. There you go. <laughs> Little editing done. And the pitch to Nick Franklin is a strike. Yeah, this this will not end well. <laughs> that much I can assure you. <laughs> I love how you go on one rant. Mm -hmm. Against meatloaf early in the year. Yeah, and it just won't go away. It won't go away. The face won't go away. <laughs> the meatloaf references won't go away. It's his birthday today. Yeah From all sides It's also uh, a little Chopper up the middle And Ramirez makes the play at shortstop it's yeah, other birthday. Yeah, right? the birthday of uh, Mark Calderon from uh, Color Me Bad to Death. <laughs> you were all over that one. They, stole they were very popular when I was in college. <laughs> brings back those collegiate memories. Here's Matt Joyce, which is a strike. Oh, two. Jake McGee up in the bullpen. I must say, your enunciation has never been better. I, I've had 20 plus years to work on it. <laughs> this one is outside, one and two. I like to pronounce things as they're spelled. Yes. And you were right on the money. B A D D. They got aggressive with the D. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Can't just drop one off. Got to give it credit. Still the ball, two strikes, the count to Matt Joyce. High fly ball toward the line and left. Brantley will run out of room. Out of play it goes. Also, the anniversary of the Beach Boys making their first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show in 1964. Wasn't that a big Cardinals year? It was a big Cardinal year, yes. They won the pennant, came from behind, won the pennant. That was your Cardinals year that you referenced. Yep. Yeah. Then beat the Yankees in the World Series. Two balls, two strikes. And the tank on a pitch down. Three and two. Oh 
Nebraska works seven and two thirds. Subtinsky a third. Now Crockett retired the first man he's faced. And there is strike three call. So Joyce out on strikes for the third time. Eleven strikeouts for Cleveland pitching tonight. I don't know if they're going to relinquish the lead on the season. Already a, a major league record, and they just continue to add on to it with that fastball there, down and away from Matt Joyce. And another pitching change coming with the right-handed bat of Ryan Hannigan do. He's up two to nothing. Coming up on Rays Live, the post game presented by Checkers. Richard Arrestus will be anchoring the coverage. We'll have Joe Madden's press conference and an interview from the clubhouse. Maybe more than one. Ryan Shaw, the new pitcher, makes his 80th appearance. And the first pitch is wide to Hannigan. A ball, no strikes. So as busy as Peralta was for the Rays last year, that's how busy Shaw has been for the Indians this year. 80 appearances. So popped up foul. Near the stands and out of the reach of Santana. That's been the story of the night. Out of the reach of Santana. Mm -hmm. On one hop throws to first and pop fouls back of first. Well, you, you think right now if, you know, and like I said, th these were tough plays. No mm -hmm. question about it. But if Santana makes them, there's no score right now. One one the count. He's got two runs off Carrasco. One of them earned. The play sends the count to one and two. Two balls, two strikes. And again, foul out of play up the first base side.
Ground ball headed to short. Ramirez up with this one. Throw to first. Santana reaching, but he gathers it in. Braves down in order. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Jake McGee ready in the bullpen. 2 nothing Rays. Holding a 2-0 lead. Reminder, Lightning fans, Sun Sports set to be your home for Tampa Bay Lightning hockey. To get ready for the action, check out Countdown to Thunder starting October 3rd for a week full of Lightning-themed programming. It's all in preparation for opening night against the Florida Panthers October 9th. We'll be right here on Sun Sports. Jake McGee on out of the bullpen. Pitcher number four for the Rays, his 73rd appearance. Five of two and 18 of 22 in save conversions. The Rays hold a two run edge. And Cleveland will have Michael Brantley, Carlos Santana, and Jan Gomes. Do up. Well, so Jake McGee, if he's going to pick up this save, he's going to earn it, that's for sure. And Zobris moves over to play left field for the Rays. Kevin Kiermeyer in the game in center field. And the Rays shore up the defense in the outfield. the first pitch from McGee inside for a ball. Breakout Brantley tough against lefties as well. He's had a great year. There's a strike. Fastball at 95 from Jake. Yeah, it, it's tough to put almost a 330 average up and have really a huge disparity in your splits. One and two, the pitch foul back. Who were shut out last night for the 18th time this year, losing one to nothing. Have shut out the Indians for eight innings tonight. Coming in, the Rays staff with 21 shutouts. He tries.
trying to close this one out. And a cut and a miss. Brantley out on strikes. Boy, you give him 95, 95, and then you give him that. Good luck. Well, we talked a little bit earlier going into next year. You, you think that this pitch from Jake McGee is going to play more and more of a role. There was a sweeping breaking ball right there at 81 miles an hour. And I guarantee you that Michael Brantley, and you can tell by the swing right there, he was not looking for that. As if Jake McGee needs another weapon. Make that 95 look like 102. Carlos Santana. First pitch is a strike at 97 to Santana. Another one in there, and Santana locked up, took it for a ball. I think Jake McGee's working on something, <laughs> a safe situation, middle part of the Indians' order, and he is in experimentation mode. And that curveball is not a bad experiment. I'll tell you what, we've seen him snap off some beauties. There is a strike. 98, upper reaches of the zone. Well, so now if you're Carlos Santana, you know, where earlier in the season you know what's coming, now you're not quite so sure. Brantley with two strikes, Hulk. He's already thrown me one. What am I going to get? Fastball away at 99. Takes the count to two and two. He strikes him out on a fastball. So back to back strikeouts. The Rays now have 10 strikeouts as a staff tonight. I tell you what, you, you like this idea here of Jake McGee planting that seed of the curveball. It's going to make that fastball harder as if it's not hard enough already. And that curveball is going to be effective on its own. Two big strikeouts so far. Rays one out away. And Jan Gomes, who has struck out three times tonight. 0 for 3 up here with two outs and the base is empty in the bottom of the ninth. And a cut and a miss. Strike one. Wide, one ball, one strike. McGee trying to finish this one off. Ahead of Gomes, one and two. Up and away with a hard stuff at 99. It's a 2 2 count. Colome works six and a third, pitched extremely well. Peralta, Balfour, and now McGee.
swing and a miss. It's all over. 96 on the fastball, and Jake McGee strikes out the side to close it out. The Rays are winners here tonight. Two to nothing over the Cleveland Indians. As Alex Colome will get his second win. A save for Jake McGee, number 19. With two hours and 55 minutes to play it. Carrasco, the loser, eight and seven. And here's the final pitch of the game as McGee overpowers Jan Gomes, striking out Brantley, Santana, and Gomes to finish out this game. So the Rays pull even in the series at a game apiece, heading into the final game of the regular season tomorrow afternoon in game three of this series with the Indians from Cleveland. So the Rays post their 77th win of the year. They got a run in the fourth and a run in the eighth. Win this one two to nothing. And Todd Callis is standing by with Will Myers right now. Dwayne, thank you. Uh, Will, we haven't done this in a while, post-game interview. You a little nervous? Yeah, I'm real nervous. I haven't been on TV in a while. <laughs> what about your night tonight? Obviously, it hasn't been the year you've wanted, but uh, closing out strong, a couple of hits in, uh, in RBI. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, to be completely honest, today is the best, the best I've felt all year. Uh, you know, my swing's not really there. There's some things still wrong, but mentally I felt really good in the box. So, uh, you know, I'm looking to carry that over to the offseason uh, for sure. What was it about tonight? I mean, something before the game? I, I don't know. I, I went in and I watched uh, I watched some uh, some stuff from last year and watched a bunch of my hits from last year, and I felt, felt good about it. <laughs> good. Yeah, maybe we should do more of that. Now, defensively, um, lately you've been playing really solid. I, some great plays tonight, a good jump on a ball. That's been a, good, a focus for you not to let your offense impact your D? Yeah, sure. You know, just just out there trying to get some good jumps. Uh, just be be ready uh, each pitch and uh, try to catch the ball. <laughs> I was watching you on the stolen base because you've said in the past sometimes you jam that left wrist when you steal bases and that could cause injuries. Have you improved your sliding technique? It looked pretty smooth today. It was a pretty smooth slide. I actually went back and watched the replay to figure out what I need to do for next year. Uh, no, you know, I, I just wear a guard on there now uh, just to stay away from injury. 24 hours from now, the Rays will be back in the Tampa Bay area. The season will be over. Are you looking forward to putting this one in your rearview mirror and looking forward to getting ready to 2015? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm ready to, I'm ready to let this one go. Uh, you know, it's been a tough year for me, uh, the worst year ever. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Uh, it happens for a reason, and the biggest thing I can do right now is just learn from it going forward and uh, make me a better player uh, and experience in this. So you've watched replays of your swing, your slide. Maybe you can watch a replay of this interview. It was very good. Thanks, Will. I know. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Guys, back to you. All right, Todd. Well done. And uh, Will ready for the offseason. 2 nothing. Rays are winners. We'll be back to wrap it in a moment. <laughs> 